Hey everybody, so today I am going to go through a very brief primer on linked data. Now you might ask yourself, what is linked data? There is a lot of material out there on the web talking about this exact thing and well that makes a lot of sense since linked data is kind of why the whole web exists as we know it. So I'm not going to go over what exactly linked data is in a general way. I'm going to be talking about it in a very specific way. Why does linked data matter to knowledge graphs? And do you have to have linked data for a knowledge graph? Is linked data a knowledge graph? So those are some of the questions that we will try to cover. Okay, I've, I've moved back a little bit so I can actually put the descriptions up on the screen as we go. All right, so let's get started. So when you are looking at linked data, it is essentially the URLs, IRIs. We talked about all of the things that you need to know about unique identifiers. Go check that out if you don't know what a URI is or an IRI or why any of that actually matters, these unique identifiers for the knowledge graph space. All right, so linked data at the root is talking about the regular internet works with URLs. You all know what that looks like, like this. Okay, so that's a form of linked data. Linked data is just basically a pointer to a target, and that target is a web page. So if you don't know, before there were things called search engines, everybody kind of had to know the address of the pages that they were getting to. Maybe I'm dating myself. If you were around for those dark ages of the internet, Give a comment below or give this at least a like. Okay, so in order to make websites searchable uh, in a very broad sense, linked data is used by things like Google where they go in and Google mines things from the page. What are they mining? Well, sometimes they're mining schema tags. Again, there's a video all about that right here. And once Google knows what that page is about, that's the indexing part, it then logs all of that information and it assigns it to the URL because the URL is the pointer. It is the easy link to that information. So when you look at something like Wikipedia, like so, all of those hyperlinks, that's actually how knowledge graphs connect things together if you're using Wikidata or if you're using Wikipedia data. So why does any of this matter to a knowledge graph? So a lot of people think that when you are bringing in data, there are two forms that we're gonna talk about. So the first one is when you are bringing the data in so that you can do things with it, you can add it to your data. So in that case, you would be bringing in these URLs and perhaps the data associated with them. So we are going to use the example of Wikidata. And all of this information, it's all hyperlinked. If you're trying to look at any information uh, about James Cameron, this is all the information that you need to know about him. Well, at least from a data perspective. So. In order to get to this, you just use the URL, right? I mean, we all know that. That's what we use to find websites every day. Well, knowledge graphs use the same thing. So if I wanted to mine the data and bring it back to whatever database I am using, I would take this URL and then I would use an API to grab the information. Now, if you don't know much about APIs, they have to exist in order for you to connect to them. Uh, so a lot of linked data has APIs, RESTful APIs, or even better, and that is how you basically grab information that you want and you pull it in and you bring it into your own systems. So you can do that, or you can use true linked data for the knowledge graph special self. So a knowledge graph, a lot of people, what they will do is maybe they're making a knowledge graph completely out of wiki data. So what they would do is they would take this wiki URL, they would make this relationship, and then they would say, oh, and it's connected in that way to this URL. That is a triple, my friends. Because the second reason we're going to talk about is really interesting. So 
you don't necessarily need to bring the data in. Now, if you are dealing with small amounts of data, you can actually store that in memory even, and you don't even have to worry about it, which is beautiful. So if you are not going to be bringing the data in, what would you do with it instead? Well, if you are querying this information, you can use Sparkle Query, or you can just call the API if the API supports the queries that you are trying to send. If you already know what you need to do with the data on your end, you don't necessarily need all the raw data to be stored on your own servers. You can use whatever linked data that's already out there, or maybe you connect it to an S3 bucket and you use Athena to do the querying for you so it's serverless. A lot of this is getting into some AWS architecture, which we will be talking about in another video, but suffice it to say, you don't only have one option. It used to be that you would have to take all the data and keep it and maintain it and pay for storing all of it. Now you don't necessarily have to do that. Now, before I let you all go, I wanna make sure that we get some real exposure to what this linked data looks like and how knowledge graphs and ontology specifically might be using it. So let's go back to our good friends at BioPortal. We're going to use the same human disease ontology that we used from the last video where we were talking about schema.org. Now, if, if you click on the class mappings, all of these are URLs pointing to other data sources. So if I click on any of them, I will go to, let's say, SNOMED, and I will be able to look at all of the information that SNOMED has on that topic. That is the beauty of linked data. I didn't have to go and grab all of the SNOMED data and put it down on disk. All I have to do is point with the URL to SNOMED so that I can traverse all of those different URLs and grab the data that I need as I go. That's what makes linked data so amazing for Knowledge Graph. And that's why Knowledge Graphs are really wonderful if you don't want to just be a data hoarder <laughs> and bring everything in-house. I can just use the data that's already out there when I need it. It's a just in time instead of a just in case model. And you have to do what's right for you. You have to decide if you have to be a data hoarder or not. There are plenty of reasons why you might actually want to consider doing that. But I wanted to make sure that all of you knew that you don't have to do that. Especially if you're doing something where you're just playing with the data and you don't necessarily need to grab it, synthesize it, and do a lot more with it. So just remember, linked data is an integral part to knowledge graphs, but linked data is not a knowledge graph in and of itself. All of this to say, when you have linked data, it does not mean it is a knowledge graph, but a knowledge graph is linked data. The knowledge graph, you do have to have linked data, but you don't have to have native linked data, meaning it doesn't have to be publicly accessible URLs that actually resolve to data sources. You can actually make those up on your own if necessary. Just make sure you follow good UID uh, protocols when you are doing that. All right, so I hope that you learned something from this. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comments below. And with that, well, thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.